about survival. It's about physical survival, surviving emotionally, and surviving mentally. My story is about my will to survive. Through the darkness of my experience and my strength to share my story. Two years ago, on a Friday evening in August, I was out with some of my friends. It was it being summer, my daughter, who was eight at the time, had been away for a week at overnight camp for the first time and was expecting me to pick her up in the morning. Because of this, I didn't want to stay out late and had left my friends early. I started down my familiar path, only a three block walk to my home. I had walked it so many times before, so that night I didn't hesitate to do it again. I suddenly heard footsteps behind me. Before I could turn around, an arm slid around my neck. The harder I fought, the tighter the grip. I couldn't get free. I thought for sure I was going to die. So many thoughts started running through my mind. Like, why are you doing this? Who is going to pick my daughter up? Who is going to tell her I died? I desperately tried to turn around to see who was attacking me. I tried to talk. I tried to scream. But no matter how hard I tried, nothing came out, and the pain became unbearable. I started to float in and out of, of consciousness. When I awoke, I was laying on the cold, hard cement in a puddle under a transport trailer. When I found the strength to get up, I noticed I was partially exposed, and it was then that I realized I had been raped. I ran to my phone, which had flown out of my hands in the struggle. I immediately called 911. While riding in the ambulance en route to the hospital, I sat with an amazing police officer who was to do an official police report about the crime. I was in shock at first. I didn't want anyone to know what had happened because I felt I had made a poor decision to walk alone. It was then she told me it was not my fault, that I should feel safe to walk alone at night and that no one had the right to do that to anyone. It was then I realized she was absolutely right. Instead of making excuses of what I was doing, I knew I wasn't responsible for this, and it didn't happen because of my choices. She kept me focused on what was important, my daughter. Something in her voice and calm way about her saved me from a dark place in my mind that night, and for that I am forever grateful. When I was asked to do a sexual assault evidence collection kit, I didn't hesitate. I never wanted another person to be harmed at the hands of this person again. The next day, I was unable to greet my daughter and hear the excitement in her voice as she talked about her first camp experience. Nope, instead, I was in the hospital trying to deal with the reality of what had happened to me, the reality that I was now a victim of rape. From that day forward, I am forever changed. I have seen movies, read articles, I watched the news, but I never thought it could happen to me, but it did. And none of these things could have prepared me for the roller coaster of raw emotions I felt. I felt hopeless, embarrassed, disbelief, and anger. I could have walked away from this experience, a change woman for the worse, but something inside of me wouldn't allow it. I remember telling myself, I can do this. I'm a strong person, I can handle this. My family have been the biggest support through all of this, and it wasn't for them, I don't know what I would have done. From the moment it happened, everyone around me reassured me that it wasn't my fault. In some ways, that night was just as emotionally difficult for them. My mother was the first of my family to see me, and she didn't have to say a word. I could see in her eyes that she was forever changed too. My father had to now face the reality that his little girl had been violated. Violated like no woman should ever have to experience. Both of my brothers handled it differently, but never once did they ever turn away. They faced it with me head on. They have been right by my side the entire time. It was as, it was as if we have become one. My injuries consisted of scrapes, bruises from head to toe. My mouth was full of sores, but the scariest of injuries were my eyes. My eyes got worse by the minute. One of my friends described them as green eyes floating in blood. Those injuries, these injuries made it difficult to face my daughter, but lying to her was even more difficult. But under the circumstances, I couldn't let what happened to me rob her of her innocence. 
So I explained to her how I had fallen in my high heel shoes while dancing. I must have said it with enough conviction because still to this day she refuses me to wear those shoes. <laughs> my physical injuries would heal, but at times it was the emotional pain that can be almost too overwhelming. But through it all, I knew I was lucky. I was the lucky one. I was lucky because I have the most supportive family. I was lucky because my friends rallied around me. I am lucky, so lucky to have met so many amazing people on my journey over the last two years. Most of all, I was simply lucky because I was alive. I'm alive to watch my beautiful daughter grow. I'm alive to experience the love of a man who I feel so much love for in return. I'm alive to feel the joy of being an aunt to my handsome nephews. I'm not a victim. I'm the victor. ashamed and although it's a part of me but it does not define who I am. My knowledge is simply based on my own experience and can be different from yours. You will never forget but eventually living the rest of your life will take over and know that you are never alone. My hopes are that someday women who have had this happen will find the courage through the strength and numbers to share their story. People that have been through a traumatic event in their life not only survive but they thrive. This is what I hope to do, and to make a difference for those around me affected. Another contributing factor to my recovery was the detective. He helped me every step of the way. He has restored my faith in humanity. His long dedicated hours he has put forth do not go unnoticed. Even after the arrest and still after two years later, he checks in with my family and I. One day, my dearest friend came to me with an idea of starting a rally in my honor. And I am happy to say we are in, heading into our second year of Bryden's Way. We base the rally around the concept of showing strength and courage to build a path for tomorrow, creating awareness against violence, sexual assault, and rape. I could have stood up here today before all of you and read out the staggering numbers of victims of sexual assault, but we often forget behind every number there is a person with a family and a story of their own. I don't want to be remembered by a statistic. And by sharing my story, it has helped me heal. So I am putting a face to one of those names today, numbers today. I'm extremely honored to be here today to remember the women who have lost their lives and for the families that have to live with the reality of losing your loved one at the hands of someone else. And they are left here to pick up the pieces. I am deeply sorry for your loss and I am ready to contribute to making the future better and brighter for our children's children. I would like to share a quote with you, a quote that has inspired me to be here today. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, you can let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you, author I know. I have chosen to let it strengthen me. Thank you. serious problem of uh, violence against women, we know that we can accomplish great things. 
if we work together. And I thank you so very much for having the courage to tell your story and share your painful experiences so that we can learn from you. Thank you so much. Thank you.